Hi, my name is Brian Roach, and today I want to talk about this book. Am I holding it awkwardly? I don't know. Um, Fashion at the Edge by Caroline Evans. Excuse the candle wax. I don't know. I was burning a candle a couple months ago, and then I don't know if I was shaking it or what. I mean, I don't know why I would be shaking it, but I think I was. Who knows? But candle wax (laughs) in the book, but I mean... Hey, I guess it makes the book more personal to me. I don't know. Um, But yeah, I wanted to talk about this important, interesting, fascinating, captivating, all the the adjectives, um, this book right here. So I guess I can put it down and maybe I'll put a picture of it on the screen. Um, Caroline Evans is a uh, fashion historian who currently teaches at Central St. Martin's, and I don't know, all her work is just so incredibly thorough and complex, but also illuminating. Again, you know, all all the adjectives. Um, So I first discovered this book, oh my gosh, it's been a couple of years. Um, Bliss Foster had made a video about, or he was analyzing the Gucci Fall Winter 2018 collection, and he was using, you know, ideas from this book to analyze it. And he was like, you know, if you ever get the chance to read it, that he, you know, really recommends it. And I thoroughly, wholeheartedly agree. This is such an incredible book. So today I want to talk a little bit about it. Um, I thought this could be a little bit of a series because, you know, this book is incredibly complex. The ideas are very dense. So maybe, you know, each video in the series could break down a specific chapter. And so I thought, what better place to start than the beginning? (laughs) So this video is going to be kind of a space for me to work through my thoughts and share, you know, the ideas found in this book and, you know, whatever I'm thinking about in regards to these ideas with you. Um, So yeah, today is going to be a video about the introduction, which you could be like, why do we need to talk about the introduction? But I think she or Evans thoroughly, you know, um, synthesizes and summarizes and introduces all the ideas that are thread throughout this book and this introduction. And it seems like she kind of wrote the book, all like the subsequent chapters of the book, and then wrote the introduction, which is a technique a lot of English professors will tell you to do. Um, I don't do it because I don't, it's incredibly, it's hard to do, but you can tell that this is, or it seems like this is how she did it. And I think it makes for a better introduction. I mean, maybe I should start using this technique in my own writing, but um, yeah, I just thought, you know what, why, why not make a video about this book and all of the cool ideas and things found in it? And before we start, I just wanted to kind of explain the cover a little bit. I don't know. It's just a really fascinating, cool cover. And I was like, why, why not you know, give a little bit of background information about it? She talks, um, Evans talks about this image in chapter one titled History, um, which I will do a video on in the coming weeks. But I don't know. I thought I'd give a little bit of information on it before. So this is a photograph by Ronald Stoops. It is from Walter Van Bergendonck's Spring Summer 1999 collection titled Aesthetic Terrorist. And I don't know, I love everything about this image. You know, the, the makeup, the hair, the, you know, positioning of the camera and the model. But, you know, most, I think, not importantly, but I guess what stands out most is the juxtaposition between this, like, modern or you could even say postmodern graphic tee and then you have this 18th century style european gown which you know looks decrepit and decayed which are two things that evans talks about at length in this book so yeah i just thought i'd give a little bit of information on this image um probably one of my favorite covers for a fashion book yeah just it's very clean very minimal but there's a pop to it so yeah okay let's start because my hands grab me i'm gonna put the book down So Fashion at the Edge focuses on the imagery of the late 1990s from the experimental fashion scene. It seems like the idea for Fashion at the Edge was created out of Evans' observation about the uniquely unnerving and somewhat terrifying imagery that was coming from designers like 
McQueen and Galliano and Margiela and from photographers like Curtin Day or Jurgen Teller. Evans uses the form of the book to apply critical theory to turn of the century fashion that encompasses more than just your standard account of dress history. She basically asks, how could she understand recent fashion history and bring it into the present and even the future? So a lot of this book, while it is about, you know, the experimental fashion scene of the 1990s, it's also a method that she wants, you know, future fashion historians and theorists and journalists to apply to different modes and different strains and strands of fashion. So she uses a lot of theoretical frameworks not commonly associated with fashion, from the poetry of modernist T.S. Eliot to the economic considerations of someone like Karl Marx, to the musings on the interconnectedness of time from philosophers like Walter Benjamin. She makes it a point throughout the book and a lot in this introduction that she doesn't want to outweigh the theory with the material conditions of the fashion object. So she is trying to strike for a balance in applying the theory. So all the writings, philosophies, and arguments unrelated to fashion and kind of balancing that with the fashion object so we can begin to approach fashion with a new mode and module of understanding. Throughout her analysis, Evans focuses on the cultural and symbolic meanings of the 1990s avant-garde. Why was it so experimental and what did these experimentations reveal about the fashion machine, which is basically an offshoot of the wider capitalist economy? So then we get to the meaning of fashion at the edge. So it basically means fashion that exists on the margins. So before designers like McQueen and Margiela reach the cult-like following that they have today, which don't get me wrong, is rightfully deserved, their work was often misunderstood and torn to pieces in the press. I mean, one only has to think about the outrage that McQueen's Autumn Winter 1995 collection caused. These fashion practitioners, so think the designers, photographers, makeup artists, stylists, and models, became a lot more conceptual in the 90s as compared to previous decades. There was a greater focus placed on concepts such as death and disaffection, illness, sex, money, and trauma. Taboo topics that are often brushed aside, especially by the perfectionism and the high glamour of the fashion industry. Yet these practitioners place them at the forefront of the fashion world's mind and on runways and in editorials. Evans argues in the introduction and really throughout the book that these new morbid and sensual fascinations were symptomatic of wider cultural anxieties regarding modernity and technological innovation. Rather than a simple change in trends or taste, Evans treats this strain of fashion design and presentation as manifestations of a particular historical change. So then she kind of delves into all the ways that this particular type of fashion was at the edge. So it was at the edge in terms of styles. I mean, this fashion focused on disease, disaffection, death, and sex was new, unconventional. It was at the edge of a century. It was at the end of the 20th century and right before the 21st century. It straddled the edge commercially when brands as big as Dior hired Galliano as creative director or publications as big as British Vogue adopted this style to reflect the current cultural zeitgeist. And then its themes were on the edge of comfortability. It mixed death and sex together that were new and it forced people to talk about and confront these taboo topics. And one thing I just wanted to read a little bit, um, this is my own note, but I'm gonna be quoting throughout because I just think her argument is just incredible, mind-blowing. But just one thing I wanted to know, a little bit of a paraphrasing situation, I guess. At the end of the 90s, the idea of the self began to take center stage again. Given the tumultuous nature of the 20th century, two world wars, the rise of fascism and totalitarianism, the Cold War, the advancement of information systems and globalization, 
and the divide between the West and the Islamic Middle East, the idea of this stable self who has a fixed place in the world began to disintegrate. Fashion design and presentation began to take on greater importance in reflecting and comment commenting upon such a chaotic time. The individual was now subject to change, mutating in various ways and constantly dying and receiving new identities to fit a certain need. By the middle of the introduction, Evans lays out her central thesis. In Western history and culture, fashion has been historically used as a tool in what Norbert Elias deems the civilizing process. Fashion helped construct a fixed identity that suppressed our base negative instincts, such as aggression, greed, distrust, and so forth. So fashion has created a self that is not only cooperative, but also adaptive. Contemporary philosopher Guy Lipovetsky experienced this idea of fashion's role in the civilizing process to create flexible identities that can respond to rapid changes in an ever-evolving world. Fashion is no longer just material adornment, but a marker of the influx in kind of fast-paced nature of modernity itself. Yet, Caroline Evans argues that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. To quote straight from the source, however, if fashion is part of the civilizing process in the form of conventional and mainstream fashion design, it is also inequally in its experimental and avant-garde manifestations, capable of providing a resistant and opposing voice to that process. On the edge of discourse, of civilization, of speech itself, experimental fashion can act out what is co hidden culturally. And like a neurotic symptom, it can utter a kind of mute resistance to the socially productive process of constructing an identity. As we produce a disciplined and controlled self via the technology of manners, for example, what is repressed comes back as a trace. Under the weight of some cultural trauma of which experimental fashion can function as a telltale memory. Seen thus, fashion is hysterical. It can be a symptom of alienation, loss, mourning, of contagion and death, instability and change. Like psychoanalysis, it investigates the domain and configuration of incoherence, discontinuity, disruption, and disintegration. I mean, I don't know, that quote is just brilliant. I mean, there's so much there, so much to unpack. And so rather than focusing on the unique experiences and traumas of the designers themselves, Evans situates her argument in the wider cultural in historical trajectories of instability, trauma, and transience. By transforming the wearer, thereby destabilizing their previous identity, fashion helps people become something new, acting out different performances and masquerading as new identities. As bleak as the subject matter of this book is, at its core is a desire and hope for a new, fixed identity in a frankly chaotic era. Experimental fashion, particularly Japanese, Dutch, Belgian, and British practitioners, began to explore the full range of the human condition, rather than just falling into a trap of happy-go-lucky superficiality. Many of these designers were freed from the commercial restraints of working at a French or Italian heritage house, Galliano being the most noteworthy exception, um, and their small audiences were respective to their haunting visions. These designers expressed how modern life was at times incredibly disparaging, but also uniquely hopeful. Evans constructs history as a sort of labyrinth, drawing on the work of Professor Ulrich Kleeman and of Marxist philosopher Walter Benjamin. And for another quote, Benjamin described how he once drew a diagram of his life as a labyrinth. The metaphor of history as a labyrinth allows the juxtaposition of historical images with contemporary ones. As the labyrinth doubles back on itself, what is most modern is revealed as also having relation to what is most old. Distant points in time can become proximate at specific moments as their paths run close to each other. Although there is no repetition without difference, nevertheless, the conditions of post-industrial modernity are haunted by those of industrial modernity when fashion designers dip into the past for their motifs and themes. These traces of the past surface in the present like the return of the repressed. 
Fashion designers call up these ghosts of modernity and offer us a paradigm that is different from the historian's paradigm, remixing fragments of the past into something new and contemporary that will continue to resonate into the future. They illuminate how we live in the world today and what it means to be a modern subject. The book essentially investigates how a particular strain of designers use imagery, those of death, decay, and disaffection, to understand their present moment. So uh, what a lot of this book encompasses is trying to locate contemporary fashion in the context of the past. Rather than constructing a linear history of design, Evans brings together moments from the past that could make for interesting connections to the present. And for our last quote of the day, in the process, the distinction between the past and the present is almost imploded. In exactly the same way, the fashionable moment that constantly collapses into the outmoded realigns the present as it goes, transforming it into a past that it will one day revive as it trawls through it for new motifs. The modern fashion designer rummages in the historical wardrobe, scavenging images for reuse, just as a 19th century rag picker scavenged materials for recycling. And in turn, the book does something similar, scavenging images from the past to examine and reinterpret those of the present. I have assumed equivalence here between the historian and the designer. So to summarize all of that information, fashion has been used to create a modern reflexive self. Fashion aids in the socialization of humans in a rapidly changing society. It becomes a site for identity along with the function of protecting the body. It can no longer be considered superficial or pointless. But Experimental fashion, and specifically experimental fashion of the 90s, did quite the opposite. It acted out what was hidden culturally. It provided a mute resistance to the socially productive process of constructing an identity. Avant-garde fashion of the 90s began to represent social traumas rather than the personal plights of the designers or creators themselves. So fashion existed independently of its creators. Evans and the tradition of Benjamin, and to an extent French postmodernist philosopher Michel Foucault, analyzes time as a handkerchief that is folded where separate points intersect and connect. The past, present, and the future connect in interesting ways that yield various results. Regardless of fashion's obsession with the new, the past terrorized and infected that newness, using the old fashion, the new. So this book <laughs> is incredibly complex and there are so many like minute nuances that definitely went over my head but i just wanted to provide an introduction um to this fascinating topic of research the 90s is such an iconic era for fashion and evans does the important work of kind of elucidating why that was and what could be uncovered by this rich treasure trove of history. So please leave your comments and thoughts down below. Um, if you liked it, I would so appreciate a thumbs up. And if you have any criticism, uh, please leave it. It'd be much appreciated. Um, and in the description box is some further reading. And yeah, so thank you and see ya.